Good Tuesday evening, everybody. I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onik. This is Weather Overtime from downtown Chattanooga, Tennessee, keeping you updated with the latest information on the forecast from the News 12 studios and also keeping you updated on the web at WDEF.com slash weather. Questions, concerns, ideas, complaints, if you must, give me an email at aonic at WDEF.com and get prepared for a bit of a change in the temperatures in the next couple of days as we see numbers switch downwards into the rest of of the forecast going back into the upper 50s by Friday, but don't worry, we'll be getting back warm again as we go toward the end of this next week. Currently, a lot of clouds out there towards sunset on the Island Cove Marina and Resort web camera. A little bit of a breeze stirring the waters around, but beyond that, winds are not too brief and breezy for right now. We will see more potential of very windy conditions over the next couple of days. Wednesday should be relatively rain-free. Then we get into Thursday, and then we see the possibility of showers taking place. More chances of rainfall late Thursday into early Friday, and much cooler as winds switch to the northwest behind our latest storm system. Which storm system is that? Well, we'll talk about that coming up in just a little bit. Nearly half an inch of rainfall for today, again measured at the Chattanooga Airport. We are still behind for the month of February, but just ahead for the entire year, so good news on that. 72 degrees today came within 8 degrees of a record high temperature, but way above normal also out there. 51 degrees are low temperature. That was a little bit closer to our normal high temperature for this time of the year, so again, not exactly where we should be on that with those very mild numbers and windy a little bit early on today with wind gusts topping about 20 miles per hour. Thanks to Courtney Goins, our web content producer here at News 12, for a view of Wilder Tower from the Chickamauga Battlefield area and under kind of a cloudy sky out there. If you've got weather pictures, we'd love to see them. Pictures at WDEF.com or on Facebook or on Twitter or on Instagram. Drop them off to us wherever you have the time frame there. High pressure doing a very good job at this time. Again, air around high pressure in the northern atmosphere rotates clockwise, so this is bringing a lot of warm, moist air off the Gulf of Mexico and off of northeastern Mexico. You can see uh, some of those temperatures down that direction very much on the warm side based on the colors here. Now, in the next couple of days, that's going to be pushing northward. You can see the warm front, the red line again going through the area just south of us, that's where the warm air is coming up from the south. And as that moves across the area, that means our temperatures are going to be going up, and that means we're going to be seeing some record high temperatures possible by about Thursday. Now back to the west of us, all of this is going to be avoiding us. We'll be looking for the potential of less in the way of snowfall as all that storm system goes well back on over to our northeast. Here's the deal, though. If you are traveling anywhere north of, say, I-70, and it's a very bad I-70 drawn line, apologies for that, we could be looking at the potential of a lot of snowfall for the Dakotas, Minnesota, Nebraska, Iowa, the western Great Lakes, and in between that area of that front coming through, we could be seeing Toronto, Detroit, Chicago, St. Louis, Des Moines, a pretty good possibility of freezing rain and sleet. Not great travel conditions anywhere between Denver and the Great Lakes, so definitely want to check ahead on your destination as we could be seeing some big problems taking place there. What we're going to be seeing is, again, a few showers taking place, possible by Wednesday morning, maybe a few popping up by early Wednesday afternoon. Then the main force of that system comes through, and we start to see better potential of showers and maybe a few thunderstorms by Thursday afternoon. But for right now, it looks like the best potential for rainfall, not on Wednesday, but it'll be coming up as we go into Thursday. Maybe some rumbles of thunder in there, but just not seeing anything in the way of major problems coming on through. And those temperatures for Thursday, unbelievable for late February. The record high for Thursday is 81, last set back in 2018, a little too close for comfort there. And looking at the possibility, some cooling temperatures coming up as we go into the weekend. We'll talk about that coming up in just a second. For tomorrow, looking for Wednesday, temperatures very mild, very breezy. We'll keep the showers out of the forecast for Wednesday, but they will be back in again as we go toward around Thursday. So wrapping up Mardi Gras and getting into the season of Lent on Wednesday with Ash Wednesday coming through. Looks like it should be dry and no major problems for getting out for the noon or the evening 
imposition of ashes if you're going to those. Temperatures, again, by the time we hit Thursday, very much on the mild side there. And then temperatures begin to take a bit of a tumble into the lower 60s to upper 50s by Friday. That's also where we start to see chances of rainfall coming on through. Through the weekend, it doesn't look like a weekend washout, but there will be some areas of rainfall out there that could be sticking around for a decent amount of time. So we could be seeing the potential of maybe 70% chance of uh, development of showers on Saturday and then down to a 30% chance on Sunday. So if you have outdoor plans, you might be better off on Sunday than at any other time frame there. And then showers linger through through Monday and then clear up as we see temperatures drop back down again after we go upwards on the temperatures from Friday into next Monday. So no winter weather being seen whatsoever. Severe Weather Awareness Week is this week for Tennessee, Alabama, and Georgia. You've already had your weeks. Today's topic is lightning, the underrated killer. You can find out more about this through the National Weather Service in Morristown, which covers the northern portion of the News 12 viewing area. That's at weather.gov slash MRX. Average bolt temperature lightning is about 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's five times hotter than the surface of the sun. The average bolt size, if you were to slice a lightning bolt in half, kind of like chopping down a tree, it would be about as thick as a pencil to around your pinky finger. When you're out and about and you see lightning, it's time to get back indoors. So this is one of the best things you can possibly remember. This one poem, when thunder roars, go in. Doors. A sturdy in structure is going to be your best bet to go to. And again, never shelter under a tree or a tall object and avoid open areas where you are the tallest object. Good opportunity to make certain that you stay safe in the upcoming spring and summer months. Uh, again, it's the, called the underrated killer for a reason. More information available at weather.gov slash lightning or at our website at wdef.com slash weather. If you have tornado sirens near your area, tomorrow could be, again, a day to pay attention. Don't forget that there are new meetings coming up. Monroe County this Thursday in Tennessee, Marion County coming up March 21st, and just after that in DeKalb and Jackson County, Alabama, taught by the National Weather Services in Morristown and Huntsville. The sessions are free, but you have to register for a seat to attend. You can do that at their website, weather.gov slash MRX or slash HUN for the National Weather Service in Huntsville. And you can also take the National Weather Service course online. That's available through the National Weather Service in Morristown. If you can't make the meetings, good opportunity opportunity to attend virtually. We can help you program your National Weather Service radio. Learn more at our website, wdef.com slash weather. Want to make certain all the teachers out there know about our opportunities to be able to come out and visit your classroom for a brief visit to where we can talk about weather, weather safety, forecasting, the mathematics, and the science of meteorology, more about emergency communications, more about what to do when severe weather is going to be a problem, and how to fight the fear by being prepared. It's a good opportunity to learn, so find out more at wdef.com slash weather and click on weather in the classroom on the menu drop-down section, and you can find out more about how to get Chip Chapman or myself out to your classroom. For more on that, you can stay tuned to my social media pages. All the details available there on numerous locations out there, so drop by and see what we're posting out there this week. Currently, again, not seeing a lot of major problems for right now, but we will continue to monitor for the potential of any problems. Tomorrow morning, for and again, not for Tuesday, but for Wednesday morning, 1030 Eastern, 930 Central, if there are tornado sirens around your area, the National Weather Service, working in coordination with state authorities, will be testing the tornado sirens, but only if the skies are going to be clear, free of rainfall, so we don't get anybody worried about what's coming up with severe weather. So be prepared for that coming up tomorrow. It's also a good time to test your National Weather Service radio. So get that ready. Again, that's 1030 Eastern, 930 Central. Tomorrow, the 22nd of February, good opportunity to get ready by participating in the statewide tornado drill. So now's the time to get prepared when nothing is going on. I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onick. More tonight on News 12. Chip Chapman has your forecast bright and early tomorrow morning. And stay tuned for more on WDEF.com slash weather.